So for our uh, presentation in ECT, we did mobile apps and how it affects education. So this is our stop motion video about how to make an app. Step one, identification. How often have you opened a bunch of tabs and tried to juggle between Facebook, work, grades, and news? This is a problem we realize students have at SAS. Our next step is decision. Step two. Decision is deciding all components to include in an app. For our students, it would include Facebook, Blackboard, PowerSchool, Contacts, to do list, email, bulletin, and news, etc. So from that step, the next step was consideration. Now consideration is just thinking about how you might put all these parts together. So now the major component in the consideration step is the user interface. So the user interface is basically what someone sees when they're actually looking at the app. Literally what's on the screen. So just draft up a bunch of different ideas that you're considering for your app and then digitize this as in put it on the computer and that that's what you're going to give your sponsors which we'll discuss in the next step. The fourth step is proposal. Proposal is finding someone willing to sponsor your app idea. If you don't know how to code yourself, expenses will be high to hire someone that knows how to code. Students might go to their school or family, or adults might go to family and friends to find someone who sees in potential in the app to propose with money. The fifth step is recall, which is realizing the base you are designing for in incorporating features. iPhone has music, SMS, calling, internet, calculator, and email. These are its base for the people it was designing for. When you're designing an app, you also want to ask the people you're designing the app for for their ideas because you're designing it for them. Who better to ask than the public? Okay, from that point, that stage, the next step is called discovering or creating. And that is basically the stage where you code for the app. So there are three different things you could do. You could outsource the app, as in pay someone to do it with the proposal money, code the program yourself, or use something like a drag and drop program to put the program together. The seventh step is application. In this step, you have to apply as an Apple developer. For your app to be available for other people to download, you have to apply as a developer. Apple developers have access to all Apple tools to create an app for a store. There are three types of programs. The first one is for an individual, the second one is company, and the third is university, which are basically self-explanatory based on your needs. And it depends on you. When w moving on to the app developing class, when we surveyed high school students about apps and education, more than 50% of students thought of an app, but only 15% considered making the app. Of these same high school students, over 50% of them said that they would consider taking a big beginner level app making course. So another expert that we have was Dr. Malsum, who wants to start a course like that at SES, and we interviewed him about why this course would be significant. Our first question is, is it necessary to take such a course? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary that all students take it, but I think there is a need for an apps course because if you look at what's happening in the world today, you've got Google Chrome uses apps, uh, Android phone is all app-based, iOS 5 is all app-based, uh, your PowerBook, I mean iOS um, OS 10 is app-based, uh, then you have Windows 8 coming out that's app-based, so the market right now is a lot of the software out there is running off apps, and apps are nothing more than just small versions of a big program. So we're finding that in the world, or in today's society, more people are looking at low-end programs that actually do a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. So with the great demand in Windows, Android, uh, Chrome, as well as Apple, yeah, there's a huge market right there now for skill, uh, skill requirements for kids or anybody to develop for the demands that are being requested. The second question was, why would this course be beneficial to students at SIS? Well, as I said earlier, uh, right now with all those people, with all those different OSs out there uh, needing apps, uh, it, creates a huge marketing area for students. 
What I found out with the kids who actually are doing the apps, they're getting instant feedback. So if you compare this with any other course, uh, English or science, you know, when you do something, a project in those courses, what kind of feedback do you get? You get feedback from a teacher and maybe from a peer. Uh, the kids who have developed apps in my classes already, uh, one kid's got over 50,000 downloads, another student's got several thousand downloads. They're getting feedback from the real world. They're getting feedback from people using the applications. If you think about a person writing a book, you know, how many people buy the book, you know, uh, versus an app, a uh, student who's 18, 16 to 18 years old already has 50,000 people that have already viewed it, may not be using it, but they, at least they looked at it. That's more you can say with some of the other things going on. Our third and final question is, what skills would students get by taking this course? Uh, depends which level they take. If they take the advanced one, if we create one, the advanced one would be more programming based. The introductory one would require no programming at all. It's just more drag and drop stuff. But they're, they would learn problem solving, uh, program design, uh, project based. There'd be a lot of it would be project based. Well, not a lot of it. It would all be project based. So they'd learn how to work with other students in developing usable products versus writing a report that nobody really reads. You know, making a PowerPoint that you only show once to your class. They'd be making products that, if they're good enough, and it doesn't take much to be good in the app market, uh, they could publish it quite easily. So they'd be learning skills, they'd be learning a wide variety of skills. That's the value of this apps course at SAS. Now we'll discuss negative impacts on mobile apps on users. The first one is, we think that users rely way too much on a phone. We can now go to our phone to check what restaurants are nearby, when we can just look around outside, and looking around isn't even that hard. This leads us to the second negative, which is increase in laziness. We have now decided that getting to a nearby computer is far too difficult to update our Facebook statuses. Why bother when we can do it from here? We are literally trying to immobilize every action, unfortunately including exercise. And then our last impact is mobile apps brought about colossal amounts of distraction. Now you don't have to wait to get home and play video games. They're available instantly. We can now gossip, game, and gamble straight from our phone on the bus ride home. However, people are losing discipline in where such behavior is okay. That's it, and thank you for watching.